Hello everyone, welcome to episode 2 of the Subway Surfer series in Scratch at the moment. In this tutorial, we're going to be adding a variety of trucks to our trucks and we're going to be adding a scrolling background. So that's going to be exciting. The first thing we're going to do is click on our stage and let's click on backdrops and this is where we're going to be adding our backdrop. Let's click on choose a backdrop and the one I'm going to be choosing is blue sky. So there we go, our cat is now on a blue sky background. What we're going to be doing is moving these bushes or plants or whatever they are onto a new sprite. So let's go ahead and do that now. Let's click on paint and let's call this sprite scrolling backgrounds. Scrolling scrolling backgrounds. Okay. Now what we're going to be doing is going back to our stage and we're going to be dragging this costume and moving it onto our sprites. So we can do that by dragging this costume and putting it onto our scrolling background sprite. And you'll see the costume wiggles a little bit there. So now our costume is now on the sprite. And what we're going to be doing is deleting the bushes from the stage right here. So the only thing we have left is this blue sky. Let's make sure that fills the whole screen by expanding it. Okay, now let's go back to our scrolling background sprites and we're going to be deleting the blue sky. So now we have only our bushes. Okay, let's go back to our code and we're going to be coding this, of course. Let's make a variable called scroll x and this is going to be keeping track of how much scroll we have in our game. Let's hide this variable and we need to reset it so let's drag out when green flag clicks, set scroll x to 0. Let's make another variable and we're going to be calling this clone. Make sure this is for this sprite only and let's press ok. Let's hide this variable and we're going to be setting clone to 480 after we set scroll x to 0. Now let's drag out when I receive update. Let's first go to the back layer, so this will appear behind everything else, like our cat and our trucks. And then, let's change scroll x by minus 3. So that will be moving scroll x backwards when we play the game. The last code we're going to be needing is set x to... So what are we going to put in here? Let's go to our operators category, and we're going to be dragging out this block called mod, which you've probably never seen or known about until now. So inside of this right here, we're going to be dragging our clone variable. And inside of this one right here, we're going to be dragging out scroll x divided by 2. Pressing play, you'll see that our background appears, but there's only one of it. And our second half is just empty. So to fill in the second half of the screen, we're going to be creating a clone. Let's go to control and drag out create clone of myself. And then when we start as a clone, let's set clone to minus 480. And this should work instantly. You'll see a clone appears and it is scrolling seamlessly. Now here's a quick little hack to make our scrolling a little bit more seamless. We're going to be using a size hack and that'll make sure that our clones can go off the screen completely. Let's go to looks and drag out the set size to 400 and then after all this code let's set size to 100. It won't be very noticeable but if you look closely you'll see that it has a more seamless touch to it. Save and we're going to move on to the next part adding variety to our trucks. Let's go to our truck sprite. In our costumes you'll see that there is multiple trucks but they're not showing when we press play. And the reason for this, let's go back to our code, is we're setting our costume to truck A and we're not choosing between the other costumes in the sprite. Let's make a sprite called costume and let's press OK. And instead of switch costume to truck A, let's switch costume to our costume variable. Now, whenever we start as a clone, we need to choose between a random costume. So let's do that now. Let's set costume to pick random 1 to 3. 
which is the number of random trucks inside of our costumes. So one, two, and three. We don't want to choose the hitbox as a costume. Okay, let's press the green flag and let's wait. There we go. There goes our flatbed truck. There goes another truck. And there goes a delivery truck, a different costume, another delivery truck. And I'm waiting for the other costume, which is the longer one. There it goes. So now we have a variety of trucks. And I also think we want to add a variety of spawn rates because they're all spawning at the same time and it's getting pretty repetitive. Instead of waiting two seconds, let's use pick random one, two, three seconds. And then let's move this create clone of myself and put it at the top. So we create a clone and then we wait random seconds. The last thing we're going to be adding is making sure that our trucks can go fully off of the screen because right now you'll see you'll clearly see that it spawns on the right and then when it gets to the left it just disappears and we don't want that. Let's make a variable called x for the sprite only. Let's press ok. And let's also make another one called speed since all of our trucks are going to be having a random speed. Since our code is getting a little cluttered here, let's make a custom block called setup. So let's press ok and we're going to be putting all of the stuff we do after we create a clone inside of here. So let's move this repeat until block off. Let's put this show block and all the stuff under it into the setup block. Let's snap this code back and let's put our setup block right there. So that small one block replaces these four lines right. And that just saves a lot of space. Now, since each of our trucks is going to be having a random speed, let's do that right now. Let's set speed to pick random and the values I'm going to choose are 4 to 8. Now we also need to set our x variable to something. Let's set x to 300. Okay. Let's go up. And what we're going to do here is be replacing x position with x. And instead of minus 300, let's use minus 500. Now let's take out this change x by minus 5, only noobs use that, Bruh. let's use change x by minus 5. Now what about the trucks that have random speeds? Let's drag in speed, but don't connect it yet. Let's go to our operators and drag out our multiply block, and we're going to be multiplying minus 1 times speed. So that'll make sure that if speed is 4, we change x by minus 4 because we're multiplying minus 1 times speed. Now let's go to our motion and we need to set x to x. That's a little confusing. Now we're going to be using our size hack again by setting size, where is it? Setting size to 400 before and then after the code we set size to 100 but since our truck is at size 70 let's set it to 70. And for this size hack to fully work, let's go to our costumes and we're going to be doing another hack that I also discovered. Let's first make sure that our outline is at zero. Then let's select our rectangle tool and trust me on this, we're going to be drawing a huge rectangle covering the entire screen. Now before you start complaining, we're going to be setting the fills to nothing. So make sure to choose that here and now we can't see it, but we still have a selection around the rectangle. Let's do that for the next truck. Let's select the rectangle. Let's draw a huge rectangle covering the screen and let's set the fill to nothing. Again, we're gonna be doing that for the last costume. Let me make sure the fill is at something so I can see that it's being drawn. And I'm drawing a rectangle and let's set the fill to nothing again. So now you can see that our truck is scrolling completely off the screen. Each truck has its own speed and each truck has its own costume. Nice. Okay, great. So the last thing we're going to be adding is fast falling. Let's go to our player sprites. We're going to be adding a few variables. Let's make a variable called grounded for the sprite only. And the last variable we need is called fast falling. And let's also make sure this is for the sprite only. Instead of having our jump inside of the physics block, let's take it out. So we're going to be dragging out if keyspace pressed outside. And then instead, we're going to be setting grounded to true. So set grounded to yes. So that'll make sure that grounded is yes if we're on the ground. 
And we also need to make sure that we set grounded to no if we start the game. And let's set fast falling to no also, because we're not going to be fast falling when we start the game. Let's drag out when green flag clicks forever. And we're putting this inside of its own separate code because we're going to be using a special block called wait until, which will mess up the broadcast messages. Inside of here, let's drag our new if key space pressed block. Before we jump, we need to make sure we're on the ground. So let's drag out if grounded is yes. So that'll make sure we can only jump once if we're on the ground. Because we jumped, we're not on the ground anymore. So let's set grounded to no. Now I want to jump a little bit higher, so I'm going to set Y to 15 and I'm also going to go up and change the amount of gravity we have from minus 1 to minus 1.2. So that just seems a little bit more realistic to me. You can keep it if you want. Okay, now since we only want to jump once, let's go to our control category and drag out wait until. And we're going to be waiting until we're not pressing the space. So let's go to our operators and drag out not and then we're going to be using key space pressed. So wait until not key space pressed. Let's put this after we set grounded to no. So now that we've waited until we're not pressing the space, we need to detect if we're pressing the space bar again. So let's go to control, drag out if then, and put this all the way at the bottom of these if statements. So let's drag out if key space pressed. Well then, we need to set fast falling to yes. So let's drag out set fast falling to yes. And then we actually need to be falling fast. So let's drag out change y by minus 2.4. Those are the values I like. You can change them if you want. Okay, let's press the green flag. So I'm jumping and you'll see we jump a little bit higher. But if we jump and we hold down space, we do a fast fall, which is exactly what I said we were going to do. So what this does is it makes it a little bit easier for the cat to maneuver between jumping from trucks. So that's the end of episode 2. If you want to see more series like our zombie shooters, make sure to smash subscribe and the like button to see more of those. Thanks for watching everyone and I'll see you in the next tutorial.